unto thee. Unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. We are gathering together unto thee, Jesus. We are here, Jesus. We are here, Jesus. We are here, we are here for you. Holy Spirit, we are here. Father, we are here. Holy Ghost, we are here. We are here for you. As we gather, may your spirit dwell within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our heart begin to worship, we be blessed because we came. We be blessed because we came as we gather, as we gather. May your spirit dwell within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our heart begin to worship, we be blessed because we came. We be blessed because we came. Let's worship him this morning. Let's exalt him. And gather together this morning in his presence. Let his mighty end, let it rest upon each and every one of us this morning. A servant that is going to be using this morning, his mighty word will come through him. Life will be, will be, will be, will be, will be altered this morning. Deliverance will be altered this morning. Ah, salvation will be altered this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for another privilege, another opportunity to come into your presence, to come and hear from you. Lord, we commit our servant to your end. Uh, we have thanked you already that you are worthy of God. Uh, you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our adoration. You are worthy of all our exhortation because it is by your love that we are still here. It is by your mercy that we are not consumed. It is because you care for us. That's why we are able to come to you. Now, thank you, King of Glory. Lord, we lift our eye, our head up to spot to say thank you for everything you've done. Uh, let's go to that throne of grace. Let's get into his throne of treasure where mm -hmm. all the grace is, where the mercy is, and the blood of Jesus gave us utterance uh, into the presence of God, uh, into the holies of holies, where the treasure of heaven is. Uh, this morning, Holy Ghost, our Father, we come uh, and we ask for your blood this morning to give us utterance this morning, to give us access to your, to your presence this morning. Let your revelation flow flow upon us, uh, blood of Jesus, uh, we gain access. Let your blood give us utterance this morning. Let your blood give us access this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let us ask this morning that the Holy Spirit will take preeminent. Holy Spirit will lead through this morning. Holy Spirit will speak to our heart this morning. We will know the mind of God. We will see God in the new dimension. We will see how powerful God is this morning. We will see the greatness of our God. Not only will we see them, we will experience them in every area of our life. Uh, we will see the majesty of our God. We will see the uh, mighty hand of our God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In every situation, God will reveal himself. Uh, God will come stronger. God will come in every circumstances this morning. As we see his majesty this morning, he will explode in every circumstance that is trying to suppress our mind uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And it will pave way for us where there is no way. It will shed light where there is no light. Uh, it will bring water where there is uh, where, the, where there is dryness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your son that you're going to use to, this morning, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will use him mightily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' mighty Amen. name, we pray. Let us Amen. pray this morning. This topic has been talking about the case for God for the past three days. Let's pray for those ones that are out there that still have one doubt or the other, that the enemy is still trying to confuse their mind, that the enemy is still trying to 
put them in the darkness of this world, that the Lord himself will visit them. Because you remember Saul of Tarsus was in the darkness of this world because he was lorn up into what the world think it's right. But they did not look at what God think it's right. They don't yield themselves to God to see God perspectives in situation. But when they refuse and is still adamant on his behavior that he thinks he's doing the right thing, and he thinks there is nobody else, that Jesus Christ is not supposed to be the one that, that will be the Messiah, and they keep on killing all the Christians, God himself show up to him. Let's pray this morning for those that still have that mindset to say, oh, no, 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 Jesus Christ is not, it's, it's, it's not supposed to be that. Let him himself, let him visit them. As a soul of thousands have an encounter with Christ, that God Himself will visit their hearts. He will show something spectacular in their eye that they will see that this God is a mighty God. So let's pray for them. Those are still lost out there. Those are still out there that do not want to come to Him. Because as we we were before, He is the one that came and picked us all. The Bible says He loves us all before we even love Him. So let Him express that same love to these people so that He can meet them, He can convince their heart, and He can and draw them near to him. Some of them are in our family. Some of them are our friends member. Some of them are people that we know. Let's pray that Lord, let your mercy rain upon these people. Visit them yourself uh, and convince their heart uh, and bring them to you just like your brothers to you. Convince their heart and bring them to you just like you did for Saul of Tarsus and you change his name to Paul uh, and it become a mighty war for you, mighty man of our offer for battle for you. Father, this morning we pray Lord that you will touch the heart of this one that are still thinking that yeah, you're not in existence. That's still thinking that I don't know there is no God. Father, this morning we pray that Lord, you will touch their heart. Lord, you will convince their heart. Lord, you will bring them to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In my family, those the ones that are still reluctant to come to you this morning, I lift them up into your hand. Lord, visit them. I in my friendship, Father, those ones that still don't believe in you, Lord, visit them. Convince them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everyone, Lord God Almighty, that has associated that with me, Lord God Almighty, to meet with them, Lord, and convince their heart to come unto you and know that you are the God who created the heaven and earth. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. 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 Welcome, everybody. I'm adding over to Brian this morning. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Sir. Uh, what a wonderful way to come to his presence for us to be able to, to open ourselves up and want, and also not to think about ourselves only, but to think about you know, our, our neighbors literally saying all the peoples in our lives to come to the knowledge of what God is, you know, revealing to us, which is for us to 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 live in His, to live life, you know, in in His presence, not live for ourselves or not live for death. Thank you very much, uh, sir. Um, today again, we'll, you know, uh, this start, this is what we're going to do through the through all the week today and um, through all the week the case for God and I think there's a reason why uh, this particular topic has been established for us to be able to go through for a whole week when you think about all the things that God has been doing in our lives but you know we're, it's been established that we we are quick to forget and we're you know we you know we, uh, we our present circumstance is always bigger than you know, it's, it's always big and, you know, helping, you know, making us forget his good deeds and things that he has done. And there are evidences of the manifestation of his love and presence with us, but our hearts always, you know, there's something, you know, that's always blocking us for us to see who he is. And I hope uh, as we continue to fellowship and have persistent communion with God, is made manifest in our lives so that we will not continue to fall into those trance and you know forgetfulness in our life. Uh, this topic, you know, we discussed it more ago. You know, today I just wanted to read some text and I'll go through the go through the devotion. And I hope uh, we can all have. The Holy Spirit minister to us through the words that and the contributions that we're going to have on it today. So I just wanted to first read uh, Deuteronomy 29 verses uh, from verse 2. And <clears throat> I'm going to read the New Living Translation. It said, Moses summoned all the Israelites and said to them, 
you have seen with your own eyes everything the Lord did in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to, all, and to his whole country, all the great tests of strength, the, the miraculous signs and the amazing wonders. But to this day, the Lord has not given you minds that understand, nor eyes that see, nor ears that hear. For 40 years, I, I led you through the wilderness, yet your clothes and sandals did not wear out. You ate no bread and drank no wine or other alcoholic drink, but he provided for you. So you would know that he is the Lord your God. So for us, with the manifestation of God's presence, true nature, true the sky, true things that happen to us, true the victories we have. God, the eventual purpose is it is to come to the fullness of the knowledge of who He is. But you know, our minds are so blocked that you know we give ourselves to depraved things rather than acknowledging he, His presence. So the case for God in our life is when you read this particular short verse from two to seven, He has done many things in our life. For us to come to the knowledge of who he is, but we have continued to give ourselves to depraved things that has blocked us from knowing who he is. Because he said he provided for us all those while he has kept us alive. He has made us, he, he, he makes us wake up every day. He gives us full shelter, the brain and all the equipment we need for us to be able to come to the knowledge of who he is. But we have continued to deny ourselves. And our text today is taken from Romans. Romans chapter one, and I read from verse 16. I read from verse 16. It says, for I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. So our call is a call of believing, having faith, that trusting that these things, these things that God is revealing to us himself in nature, in, 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 on the earth, for us to believe that he's God and to acknowledge him, to, to go back to uh, that Deuteronomy 6, that all those things that he's doing, the revelation of his presence is for us to know him. We, we are called to fellowship with God so that we know him, so we know his will and we'll be able to abide and do those will. So you see, if I'm not ashamed of the good news about Christ, it is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is, this is accomplished from start to finish by faith for us belief. But if we continue, that's why, you know, you know every time we talk about belief, it, this is, that's why we, say we are believers that we believe that there's a God. And the God is, you know, drawing us back, back to him to restore us. This good news, is it, this good news, tells us how God makes us right inside. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scripture says, it is true faith that a righteous person has life. So if we don't believe that there's a God, then we are, we are still dead. So the only way for us to have new life is the case of us accepting and acknowledging that there is God and he's trying to draw us near. That is why all the manifestation of his goodness is surrounding us chapter and verse 18 it said but god shows his anger from heaven against all sinful wicked people who suppresses the truth by their wickedness and it, suppressing the truth is you know giving you know we are giving ourselves to depraved mind by saying he's not available if it's not if it's available why is it you know it's easy for us to look at things and say ah, if god is there why would those people be suffering the fact that those people didn't give themselves up to god and now we, you know, we, you know, we think it should be the one solving our situation when he's calling us with, you know, every time, but we have continued to give ourselves to depraved things. He say, wicked people suppress the truth by their wickedness. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. So, you know, we know this truth because with the manifestation of his presence, just like the Israelites in the Deuteronomy that I read, God has shown himself. They, you know, they, they, their shoes for 40 years, they didn't change shoes. Their clothes, you know, everything was good. You know, he showed them manifest wonders, amazing grace during their walk from, uh, from slavery to salvation. You know, they know the truth about God because he had made it obvious. He makes it obvious, but our minds are very black. As in, our, it, our, our hearts are hardened. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky 
through everything God made. They can, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse of not knowing God. You know, we've seen these things, but it is our own minds that have, that have become dull based on what we have given our minds to. So it's not, there's no, we can't say, ah, there's no evidence that he exists because he has shown himself multiple times every time we wake up. Yes, they knew God, but they, they wouldn't worship him as God or give him thanks. And they began to think of foolish ideas of what God was like. As a, as a result, their minds became dark and confused because we gave ourselves up to those kind of things because we have, you know, we are longing for a God and he exists and he has showed us a way to get to him, which is in Christ Jesus. But we, are so, we still give ourselves to things like, oh, what if he's like this? You know, claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious ever living God, they worship idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So God abandoned them to whatever shameful things they had desired. Their hearts desired. As a result, they did vile and degraded things which with each other's bodies. They traded the truth about God for a lie. And the lie is that some God that we, you know, we came up with in an we as in. You know, we, we they are not we, we didn't come up through God's creation. Now we came up through another means because we gave ourselves up to that thing because we feel that we are wise. You know, they traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worship and serve things God created instead of the Creator Himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. This is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turn against the natural way to have sex and instead indulge in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, bond with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men. As a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserve, which is death. Since they thought it is foolish to acknowledge God. So our, our sin is, is, is uh, you know, unbelief. The, our major sin is not believing that God exists or yielding to him. So it's unbelief. It's, so since they thought it's foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking. And the foolish thinking is that, you know, they took the lie and they ran with it. Abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that it should, should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarrel, and deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. They invent new ways of sinning and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand, break their promises, are heartless and have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die. Yet they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them. So do them too. So for us, all this is say, say, apart from giving ourselves to a depraved mind, now we invite people, we encourage other people that know, and we even put it out there as we make, you know, we, we make a case, we argue that no, it's not, it doesn't exist. Even if we, you know, we are, you know, we are we are living for death. Now we 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 become stumbling block for people that want to even come to the knowledge of the truth that God exists. You know, so we not only set ourselves up for failure, we now invite more people onto the road to damnation because we have decided to live with the with lies instead of live with the truth. So for us, the case of God is right here for. You know, it is God has revealed himself more than enough for us. For us, we have no excuse to say, oh, uh, let's make the case or make the case for. It's, it's not it's not a debate that, OK, let's make the case for a case against not Because God has it evidently, like we've seen here, he has shown himself. They say through everything God made, they can see his invisible quality. So they can see the evidence that he exists in our life. So let, let's just go through the devotion today. They say. They are known so blind as those who will not see Richard Dawkins. You know, don't you get, as it is very obvious that we have closed our mind. That is why we can make a case not for God. Because if we have opened ourselves up, we will not never make. You see, they are not so blind that those who will not see. As it, the things are evident, but they will not see because they have closed their mind. You see, Richard Dawkins, the well-known 80s said, 
it is absolutely safe to say that if you meet somebody who claims not to be to not to believe in evolution that person is ignorant stupid or insane that is his own truth that is his own truth and which is a lie like you said it is absolutely safe to say that if you meet somebody who claims not to believe in evolution he believes in evolution because he gave himself up to that that person is ignorant stupid or insane that is his own quote that was reserved to him but the truth is most great scientific minds from the past brilliant men who founded and developed key dis disciplines of science were creationists so the people that you know that you know created his disciplines that he is saying they are, they are either stupid or insane they are the, they, they now were the great minds so he is saying that the, anybody that doesn't believe in evolution they are stupid or insane but the ones that created that pro you know that brought you know you know that that, that 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 brought you know modernization as in that created these great disciplines they were creationists because they believed that god created heavens on earth so they opened their mind that was why they were filled with knowledge and they could actually create what you know they could bring about those disciplines but he is saying that a well-known it is saying that it is safe to say that if you don't believe in evolution, that that person is ignorant, stupid, or insane. But that is not the truth. He said, most great scientific minds in the past, Bill who founded and developed key disciplines of science were creationists. For example, physics, Newton, Faraday, Maxwell, and Kelvin. Chemistry, Bold, Dalton, Pascal, and Ramsey. Biology, Ray, Pasteur, Mendel, Linus. Geology, Steno, Woodward, Brewster, and Agassiz. And five astronomers, Kelp, Kepler, Galileo, and Eschel, and Mounder, were, were, were these men ignorant, stupid, or insane? Sir Isaac Newton managed to discover the composition of light, deduce the laws of motion, invent calculus, compute the speed of sound, and, divine, and define universal gravitation while being while believing a universe could only proceed from the council and a domain of an intelligent and powerful being. He believed that there was a greater power. So he didn't believe there was an evolution. And he was a great mind based on human, human, uh, you know, for, for, from, 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 the, from the philosophy of men or from the standards of men, he was a great mind. So for these atheists to say that anybody that doesn't believe what he believes is, is that person is damned. You know, that is, you know, ridiculous because these great minds believe that, you know, there was a, the, 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 as in the creation of the universe was created by God. In 2007, Newsweek magazine survey, so Newsweek mag magazine survey, 78% of those polled attributed creation to God, while 13% believe in naturalistic evolution. Don't be intimidated by non-believers. Push back. The Bible says they know the truth about God because he had made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky through everything God made. They can clearly see his invisible quality. So they have no excuse of not knowing God. Yes, there is a God, and he wants you to know him on a personal level. A call, call, love, a relationship for us to be able to have personal encounter with who God is. Like we said, most of us, we wake up daily. We, you know, God has given us, you know, good health. We wake up, we have families, we have loved ones, you know, that are going through different circumstances, but God is in is, is his business of healing and making us all. So we have seen who he is. Even when the, you know, the, 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 the human knowledge fails us to, to, for us to like, how is that possible? How is, how, how is, is it possible for, for the Red Sea to be parted? How is it possible for, for the River Jordan to dry uh, you know, God has shown who he is, even in the laws of men, the standards of men, that it is not humanly possible to do. God has shown it. For. And even in the standards of men, it is impossible for, the, for, the, for, for man to evolve. You know, even though we're trying to actually just, you know, in a, in a, in a point of argument, it is even it not possible for man to have evolved all these years and we have not evolved to something else, you know? So for us, 
God has shown himself true. And he called for our life, like the first text that we read today, is a call for us to know him personally, just like our devotion ended today. That we chew. So verse six, it said, you ate no bread, Deuteronomy 29. Verse six, so you ate no bread and drank no wine or alcoholic drink, but he provided for you so that you would know that he is the, he is the Lord your God. He did all his things, revealed himself, and he's still revealing himself, revealing his will in our life, so that we will acknowledge him, so that we can accept him, so that we will know him personally and eventually live in him and live a life eternal. So for us, the case for God is right here. God is the evidence of his presence is in our life. And we are even, you know, is the evidence of his goodness because we are gathered unto him, not unto ourselves today, because you know, we are evidence of his presence, that he is with us and he's revealing himself through his word, you know, which is life already. So for us, we know he exists and we know, you know, He's the one that owns today, tomorrow. He's the Alpha and Omega, and he's our God. And I hope as you come to this, you know, as you gather onto in fellowship, you know, that we come to in the fullness of the knowledge of who he is and his love for us in Jesus' name. So let's have contributions today. Mm. I know we've been talking about these contributions, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think you you said a lot. So <laughs> uh, the, 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 the bottom line is, is simple. Uh, but like we say, most of these people, you said it rightly, their mind is closed. Their mind is closed. Why? Because they've given them themselves to to the things that are pleasing the flesh. Uh, you with me? Things that are pleasing the flesh, things that they can get satisfaction from, things that can only please them. So they cannot see anything other than when you are human and um, what you desire most is for you to fulfill, to, to satisfy your flesh. You will not see God, you will make, you will see everything alternative uh, you will see uh, you will go with anything that alternates to god because um when you are in flesh you cannot walk with god when you're giving to to yourself you cannot please god so everything against everything that we walk as in god's uh god that will show god in your life they are dead because uh to be kind of mind carnally minded is um is dead and to be spiritual like minded is life. And I'll thank you for taking that uh, to Deuteronomy because they have a closed mind. And why is a closed mind occur? If you look at the life of Saul of Tarsus, he had a closed mind. He had a closed mind and he had one way track. Then the law of Moses said this, the law of Moses said that. And in the law of Moses that they read, they read the Torah literally to themselves. To, to, as Torah written, they never read that Torah to themselves to say, Torah, what, I, what is God saying to me concerning this? And they took it literally to not translate it. And because they never saw God in the Torah that they're reading. They saw man in the Torah. They saw Moses in the Torah. They saw man. When you start doing, working with God and you still continue to see self, you will not see God. You will only see the accomplishment of self. And that will close the mind of human. Because when you start seeing self and you see the, what ability God has given you to expand who you are, the power coming, when the power coming, the fame coming, when the fame coming, then the authority coming, then you think that you yourself have the ability to do things not knowing that it's somebody that gave you that thing that you're using. Then you close your mind to the person and you start thinking, look at what happened in the life of Solomon. There's so many people in the Bible we can look at. Solomon was given wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And as time goes on, he used them and he forgot the giver of those things, which actually now led them into disobedience to the giver of those things. That's what human are. 
We are created in that sense. But until we totally kill the self, not to continue to grow in our life, uh, so we can actually see the one that has created us as the only solution to whatever we may be going through. That we have no solution. Because the more solution that we think we find, the more problem it creates for somebody else. So we now create, kill somebody to bring life to something else. And we think that we have the authority to do that. And that's what flesh does. It closes your mind to God. And that's what the devil always try to do in the life of the children of God. To show us that, no, don't look on that side. Look on yourself and just set you for what you see. But God is bigger than that. He's a merciful God, like you rightly said. He wants us to come to him. And he saw us. He keep on looking at us, laboring unnecessarily because we have not yielded to him. We have not turned our desire to him. We have not turned our flesh to him so that he can now give us that spirit to rule us so we can do the right thing. Then his anger from heaven came down against all those people that are sinning. May, may, may we experience his mercy for real and stop depending on our ability because our ability is... It has nothing to do with who he is. He created us. He moved us from the womb. When we come to life and we are alive, from the day that we were born up to now that we are in, yesterday we learned that if you think about it, you make the brain that connect to the eye, to the ear, to everything. What, what, were you the one that created all those things? For you to wake up this morning and get up and think that the first thing you do is to brush your teeth. You think you're the one that did that? Or that you must take a shower to go out? You think you're the one that did that? Or that you must put on the clothes before you go out? You think you're the one that did that? No. It is a mercy that enables us to do that. Until we start taking ourselves out of the equation and allow the Holy Spirit to rule us, um, it will be very difficult to, 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 to know who God is because the science, the, the education, the society, they have repented, they have recreated who God is and they give them to us as child until we start going to the presence of God to find out who God is. Society is trying to, devil is taking hold of those people that the world has created and they are rewriting the story of who God is, that they're now learning people more into their selfish, reprobate mind. And people that don't have eyes, that have a close mind, they fell into the trap and they will all perish together. If we have friends and family that are out there, it's an opportunity. This world is not the end. There is another world out there. So you leave once, and you die once. After death is judgment. If you are a sinner and you know what you're doing, it's a wrong way that you're going. They may tell you, they may be praising you, they may be telling you your great thing, your that, but you know deep down in your heart that you're not right with God. It's an opportunity for you to come and tell him, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Forgive me of my sin. Stay in your blood. I confess you. You died for me, you rose for me, and you are my, you are the son of God. Come into my heart. I confess you, Jesus, as the Lord over my life. If you say that prayer, look for Bible believing church. Tell them to you just become born again, they will work with you on how to start your Christian journey. If you can find a church, go on the internet. Type rccg.org. You will find the redeemed Christian church of God, and then they can work with you as well. Rest of us, listen, when we were born, we, were came, we came down here nakedly with the back, with a, with a wrap sack of nothing, water, naked. The same way we will go. They probably just do some little judiciary things to put a cloth on us when people come to view us. But eventually, those things are going to go. The only thing that you need as a child of God as a child of God, is to continue to look unto God. 
This morning, our prayer meeting, the Bible of today, is that even if I walk through the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Looking onto the cross, sticking to the cross, looking at Jesus, he is the author, he is the finisher of our faith. As a Christian, we don't have any alternate. This world doesn't belong to us. Don't live like those that are in the world. The Bible said you are in this world, but you are not of this world. Don't fall into the deceit. Don't fall into the trap. Don't think this is the end because this is just a journey for you. Journey for you and I. And the best person that can guide us through this journey is Christ. And he has given us the Holy Spirit to lead us. May God help us all to not fall apart into the end of those deceit that the people have out there that are painting to be good. But really, when you script out the, 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 the picture, you find out that it's a death trap. May God keep us and continue to share his grace upon us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Like you said, you know, we, we have to give ourselves to God for us to be able to know his truth. And we know Christ is the truth, the way and life. So for us, we should give ourselves to Christ. Like you said, without him, we cannot achieve anything. We should submit and yield. You know, the prayer of yielding is very important because most of the time, like I said, our flesh is always you know, fighting with the spirit of God, you know. So for us not to yield to a reprobate mind, but to yield to the mind of God with true his spirit. It takes, you know, persistent seeking and abiding in Christ for us. No, because it's easy for us to yield for reprobate. You know, many things that come to us as good news, you know. Before we know, we're already making arguments for the accuser of the brethren instead of us, you know, speaking law for people to be able to come to the fullness of the knowledge of God. For, because for us, you know, every day that we continue to fellowship and God, we are trying to know him more so that our minds are fully transformed, not for us not to continue to conform to worldliness. It's easy for us to conform to the worldliness because we are in a society where, you know, lies prevail, but we know the truth because Christ is the truth. So for us to abide perpetually in that truth, we have to abide in his word. We have to fellowship with him. So we would not be given to a reprobate mind because it's easy because sometimes he will, you know, even in, in the assembly of God, you know, lies become truth. So it is very important that we seek Christ and we let the Holy Spirit take preeminence in our life so that we, we won't yield to, you know, to a reprobate mind because it's easy for us to, you know, take lies as truth and people will argue it to the ends of the earth. But there's a case for God. God has shown himself and is revealing himself through us, through the environment that we live in, calling us to himself to come to the fullness of the knowledge of who he is, his love, his will for us, and for us to be able to live a life being, you know, live a life in him, because without him, we will not be fruitful. Without him, we have no life. Thank you very much, Pastor. Do we have any other contribution? Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Amen. I want to appreciate all the contributions, uh, particularly the scripture that Hebrew brought for Deuteronomy 29, verse 4. There's something I want to draw, I want to just say, uh, draw our attention to it that uh, in Deuteronomy 9, verse 4 says, Yet the law has not given you an ear, heart to perceive, and eyes to see, and ears to hear unto these days. So it was like, it's like, is it God that is making them, hiding their heart? Is God responsible for them not to be able to hear him, not to be able to perceive, not to be able to apply their, their heart to doing what they are hearing? You know, so as Pastor was explaining, just and Pastor broke everything down. I just want to draw our attention to it. You know, when the Bible says, unless a man is born again, John 3, 3, you cannot see, you know, you cannot see the kingdom, you know. So 
Even when you are born again, you do not live in obedience, total obedience to him. And you do not, you don't, you don't, you don't treasure the things of the kingdom. You make light of it. When God says anything, you make light of it. Whenever there is a call to the body for a particular task, you make light of it. All those things, they are records. You know. So when you are you read, you are able to study the word of God, you fellowship with you, you fellowship with him. You know, you go closer to him, you desire him, you are available to the body. Then the Lord will, will open himself up to you, be able to assess him. We'll be able to assess spiritual things. My, in my father's house, many mansions. There are a spiritual realm that you can access to. A walk came the other day, Pastor was saying that the Lord said that you cannot assess him. What are you assessing? And is it everybody, even in this local expression, is it everybody that will be able to access what God said you have access to? It's not. It, when, it's, it, when you are hurt, when you, when you, are, you are committed, your heart is involved, you, you, you are available, then you'll be able to, then God will open himself to you. God will open himself to, to such an individual, to such a group of people. Then it will not be saying your ear did not hear, you, your, heart, your heart does not perceive. No, it is to those, like Pastor was saying just now, when you are carnally minded, when you do not take the things of God, you make light of the things of God. You don't have intimate relationship. You just make everything as though, casual. You cannot assess. Even when God is speaking, you cannot hear. Your eyes, the eyes become dim. You cannot see. It is what God is saying. You cannot see the prophetic direction of what God is saying for the now. What God is doing, we will not be able to assess. So, to, to God, God is the desire of God. The Bible said, it says, it's my good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So when the Lord Jesus Christ was asking the disciple, who do men say I am? This one will say this. This one will say that. They said, you are prophet, you are this, you are this and that. He said, but who do you say I am? And Peter said, you are the son of the living God. I say, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. So there are things that are hidden from, uh, you know, mm. people hidden. Mm. You cannot assess them because you are not available. Mm. You go, it's not by going to church. It's mm. not by uh, singing and dancing in the church. Where is your heart? Are you mm. available to God? Is your time available? Is your money available? Is your, what are you available? Mm. These are the things. When you, the more you commit yourself to God, the more God will commit himself to you yes. and reveal himself to you yes. and grant you access to him to begin to accept the things in the spirit. And you will find that before you know it, you know, everything, we don't, the only thing you're after is God's glory. Mm. He gives you the access. He creates hunger in you, create desire in you, create test in you, create passion and longings in you. Everything comes from God. John said, no man can receive anything or let us give it to him from heaven. For us to be able to love God, it comes from God. The Lord Jesus Christ said, no man can come to me unless the Father draws him. Mm. So everything that we can come into is come from God. It's our, our availability, our heart commitment, you know, love for him. What, how we treasure the things of the heaven that we give you placement. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Man. That's, that was greatly expressed. We thank God for that revelation. It is our availability. Just like you said, you know, if you look up, if you look at the story of Pharaoh, you know, he saw the manifestation of God. And for a minute, he will repent. But because, you know, God knows his heart, he knows his intention. God adding his heart more and more. So, like you said, these are motives and intention. Is it to trick God, you know, by our service, by our going to church? Or are we truly available? Are we truly acknowledging and accepting him for who he is? Who he is? Because, like I said, just like, uh, the, even, like I said, the deep things, 
maybe it might not be revealed. But what about the ones that were revealed? If you look at that uh, Deuteronomy, the same Deuteronomy, if you look at the end of it, chapter 29, Deuteronomy 29, 29, it says, the Lord our God has secrets known to no one. We are not accountable for them. But we are and our children are accountable forever for all that he has revealed to us so that we may obey all the terms of the of these instructions. You know, what about the one that's been revealed to us? Okay, okay, the ones that have not been revealed, which we, just like our sister said, we can come to the knowledge of that because that means we, that means we're seeking and we're persistently seeking him. And God's like, oh, he has sought me this way. Okay, I will reveal more to him because it's the level of us you know, our, int our intentions of him that we have, we have opened up more to see greater things, just like we've been reading from the Greek journal, as, you know, every step is seeing new things. But that's because he's persistently seeking God. But what about the ones that we have been revealed to? Just like what we are saying, the evidence of who he is right now. We have been revealed to, right, that it is not by our power or by our might that we are alive today. And we have known about Christ. Those ones we have been revealed to. So we are accountable for what we have been revealed to. So the ones we are not revealed to, okay, we can say that at least that one, we are not accountable for it. But God even wants us to know him more. But because the verse 6 there, he says, all these things he's doing is for us also come to the knowledge of it. Because right now, okay, our minds are blocked. Because the ones we are seeing, we are, like our sister said, we are taking it lightly or we are not passionate. We are not seeking his will. So he has revealed a lot. Just like I said, Pharaoh, he revealed multiple things to him. And he wasn't accountable for what he has revealed to him. So, like I said, the Lord has, our God has secrets to secrets no, known to no one. We are not accountable for them. But we and our children are accountable forever for all that he has revealed to us and he has revealed himself so he's evident that he is available he is present he is alive so knowing that we should come to the knowledge of who he is and from there we will be revealed more too and i hope god will continue to reveal himself to us but like i said our intentions are we persistent are we you know are we do we long for him just like as jesus said are we available for him or we are just you know trying to get back and I hope God will help us because that's a true revelation. Thank you very much. Do we have any other person before I just hand over to the pastor? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, when we look at um, the story of the children of Israelites, we see um, how God, you know, led them out of the land of Egypt through to the land of Canaan. And often time when you, when some hears it, right? Even if they have not read to see, you know, the process, to see the stage by stage of how things unfolded, how God led them. And they look at, compared to now, one of the things that I personally have heard is, inability to give control to someone they don't know or they can't see. And they equate God to the government, to our, you know, the worldly government. How do I put it? The earth government. Meaning that they want to be in control. And as a result of that, they know that Accepting Christ means they are handing over their lives to him. They want what Christians or the children of God have. But then they don't want to let go of the control of their lives. And a lot of people battle with that, of that control thing. Because of course then, when you succeed, you get or you make it, you are credited to yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's part of being in control, right? Mm -hmm. You attribute it to yourself. You know, you take all the accolades and everything. Oh, I did this because I did this. Mm -hmm. But when you give the control to him, 
when this happens, everything goes to him. So there's a lot of issues with giving control to God that they don't see. And they can't understand the fact that he lives, he's alive. Mm. So it's a very difficult thing for most of these people we're talking about. Mm. They don't want to give their control. Mm. And we can see how politics is across the globe today. Right of this, right of that, right of this. When you give control to the government, government become bigger. It's it's a spiritual thing that we're talking about here, right? But the only thing they can equate it to is the government of men. Mm. And when you are trying to um, relate that to this, it becomes complicated and it becomes something they don't want to go into at all. So, I think we need to clarify that the government is like when, you know, at the point when they wanted to crown Jesus, it was like, no, I am not the king of here. <laughs> he, he, he understood that. Mm. But I have not come here to not be king this now. There is a reason why I came. So, that understanding made even Christ himself to achieve his purpose. Mm. But every time we try to equate our earthly government or governance to the governance of God or Christ, then we be, people began to miss the essence of it. And they see that I'm giving control to him and I will have nothing. Amen. Hmm. Wow. Amen. Thank you very much. I don't know what the pastor of the time is. <laughs> thank, thank you, Brian. Thank you very much, especially for the Deuteronomy tonight that you that you injected into this. Uh, we thank God for the for the wisdom and the power of Holy Spirit that's working upon your life and everyone else has been um, moderating this line. God, we continue to increase you in all aspects of your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. As you're growing spiritually, you will not diminish. You will continue to increase more in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Uh, Brother Sam, you just, uh, I, I, you just bring a different perspective to it. And why are they actually only dealing, uh, equating God's government to the government of this world? Because they're still saying self. Their eyes have not been opened, like we read in that Deuteronomy. Their eyes are blocked. There, even and when your eye is blocked to the spiritual thing, your mind will be blocked as well because you will not think anything else is bigger than what you see. But when you see things that you can only think of, that you can only feel, that you can only touch, you can only smell, you can only uh, uh, hear, and all the five senses, of, and you do not look beyond that then you're limited and that's what the case may be that's what the case is until we know that the one that created us we are returning to is him that is the key many people don't think that they have, they have another place to go to, uh, to be held accountable for their action they think this is it but brethren this is not it this is not it. There is more to life than what you have right now. Because after what you have right now, there is a real life that you're going to live. And that life, you either live it in a joyous celebrating and that singing hallelujah, or you live it in the clenching of your teeth, in the pain, in the sorrow, in the clenching of the teeth, in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the, in the hell. And that's the bottom line. So you have a choice to make. To either let this first flesh die here and live in a better place, or you let this flesh live here and die on the later on. Which one you want to choose? It's your call. It's your call. And I just pray that we will make the right decision to kill the flesh here so the spirit can live for eternity. Let the spirit of God live in you. And don't, Jesus came, like Brother Sam said, Jesus came, he knew his purpose. That his purpose is to kill the flesh here. For the flesh to die here. 
that the flesh will not continue to rule him. So he did not take the kingship to rule here. And when he killed the flesh here, what did he have? He had the kingship to rule forever. It becomes the name that is above every other name. It becomes the one that the king of kings. It becomes the Lord of Lords. And that in the name of Jesus Christ, every name, man, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Are you willing to give that sacrifice to kill this flesh so that you can gain eternal life? Please, I beg you, kill the flesh. And if you don't know how to, wake up in the morning and say, flesh today, you're subdued to the Holy Spirit. You're not going to rule me today. You're not going to control me today. He said, I will yield to the Father in everything that I am going. And you go into the Word of God. And let God purify your heart. Because the heart of the man is desperately wicked. But the Bible says, God sent His Word for His Word to heal us. And clean everything in us. And set us free from the bondage of the flesh. And may that be the portion that we have in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you once again. You have spoken loudly. And we have heard you tonight. And we know that you are telling us something. Our Holy Spirit, what you are telling us individually, we surrender our heart to you. Let our heart be receptive of it. Not only receptive of it, let our heart take action to correct them so that we can kill this flesh and not yield to this flesh in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because we want to reign with you. We don't want to die here and then die there too. But Lord, let the flesh die. Let the flesh die. Let the flesh die in the name of Jesus Christ. That the Spirit of God will come into full function in our life. That every step we take, we will recognize you. Every thought that comes through our mind, we will recognize you. Every word that we speak, we will recognize you. We will not speak of our own accord, but we will speak according to the, to the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus we take this opportunity to remember, to remind all those people, that to, to remember all those people that are out there, that God is anywhere they're battling, to know who you are, from who you are to themselves. Father, reveal yourself to them. They may not know, because the world has blinded them, but all show up to them. Let them see who you are, so that they can come unto you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is not of anything. It is the world that covered their mind. You are not the one that covered their mind. But we are pleading on their behalf this morning. That Lord, uncover their mind and let them see you. Let them see you. Let them see you in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that the world has put in their mind and have covered their mind for them to not see you. Father, we pray this morning that Lord visit them. Take that coverage from in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. With that we are in you too. You say he that stand, let him take it. Bless him fall. Lord, we don't want to fall off your sight. We don't want to fall off your of your, off, off your head. Continue to uphold us with your right hand of righteousness. Is that going to be a temptation that will come our way? Yes, but Lord, we know we are only depending on you. We surrender totally to you. Every area of our life that we have not been able to surrender, Lord, snatch us out of that in the mighty name name of Jesus Christ. Help us to totally give our servant to you so you can take total control of our life and continue to lead us by every way, by every way in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen, amen, amen. Let us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And the one the Lord has blessed, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, Wario. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. Uh, may the Lord keep you. May He shine His face upon you. Uh, be gracious to you and grant you peace all around in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.